Today on the Jiminy Show, I'm going to take this janky ass Athlon X4 and run it at 4.7 gigahertz on air. Hey guys, Joe here, and uh, this morning at about 3 o'clock, couldn't sleep, and I was sitting around and I was thinking, hey, you know what, I've got some old parts laying around and I want to build something. So, that's what I did. It's actually that thing back there, as you can see, all you can see is graphics card, so what I'll do is I'll uh, pick you up, walk you over to it, and then we'll take a look at what the parts are, and then we'll discuss what I did to it. So just moving the fan I had sitting here out of the way, this is a XFX 580, which I'm testing, you'll see a video on that. But this thing is an old Gigabyte F something blah blah, I'll put it up on screen, I think it's an F2A88. Uh, XM board. It's a DDR3 capable board that is made for FM2, FM2 plus socket. Don't know if it's actually visible there. It's quite tightly packed in there. But this is an MATX or maybe even smaller. No, I think it's an MATX. I always get the size mixed up. But it's a Athlon X4 750K system that I built because I don't even remember where the dang board came from. I actually spent this morning trying to watch all my parts pickup videos to figure out when I even got this board. I think it's been well over a year. It's been sitting in the closet. I put it together, I think originally for just kind of like a YouTube machine while I was working on my other builds and it just went into the closet. However, I'm having some difficulties with the Dell system because that motherboard doesn't allow for overclocking or at least it won't accept overclocks. So in the meantime, I wanted to build something else just for fun while I'm saving up for some good parts. And uh, yeah, this is what I had in my big bin O parts. That's actually another AMD system underneath that. That's an old uh, Opteron 1385 system, which runs really good, except that's another one of those DDR2 things. And I'm just not a huge fan of DDR2 right now. Yeah, I'm using a stock cooler from something else. I'm not sure what AMD that was from, but it seems to be working well. Obviously, since it's sitting open air, it uh, does fine. I added an extra fan because, as you can see, there's no heat sinks or thermal pads or anything on the power delivery or nothing. So that's why we're doing that. That helps blow a little bit of extra cool air on it. So I guess the next thing to do is power on. We'll go into the BIOS, and I'll show you how I'm actually running it at 4.7 gigahertz on air. So here we are in the Gigabyte UEFI Dual BIOS. It's a dual BIOS board. It actually is a pretty good board because it's recovered from some stupid mistakes I've made quite well, actually. But let's go ahead and take a look at the BIOS real quick. Obviously, you have advanced frequency, advanced memory, advanced voltage, and miscellaneous settings. So it's actually not a bad motherboard for overclocking. It's just it's FM2, FM2+, plus, so it's a dead socket unless you can get you know weird processors or if you, you can massively overclock your chip. Now, the chip that's in here, again, is a, well, it's not going to tell me there, but it's an AMD Athlon X4 750K, which is a four-core, four-thread, well, technically two-core, it's SMT, just kind of like the quad-core or core two quads are, and it normally runs at 3.4 gigahertz with a boost to 3.6. So as you can see, I'm running it, hopefully you can see that, it's running at 4.693. It fluctuates a little bit, but I have it set to 4.7. As you can see, 47 multiplier. It will boot at 4.8, but it's not very stable. Now, I haven't messed with the base clock. I don't need to. 4.7 is actually pretty good. I did change the Northbridge frequency to 2300 megahertz from 1600 megahertz because it was crashing otherwise. And then when it comes to things like the memory, it's just running at 1600 megahertz. I did add 0.222 volts to the V-Core, which runs it at about 1.45 to 1.5 under full load. And uh, that does seem a little bit high, but for these older AMD systems, it's actually not the worst in the world. So we're booting into Windows, and I'm going to show you what this chip is capable of, being overclocked by a full 1.3 gigahertz. 1.3 gigahertz on a 3.4 gigahertz chip. That is a pretty big overclock. Also, this mouse doesn't work right. I thought it was USB ports on the Dell. It's actually the mouse. Let's show you that it is running at full speed. I 
Funny enough, when I had it at 4.6 gigahertz, it was only showing 4.4 on the screen. But once I bumped it up to 4.7, it actually shows the correct speed, which is really weird. And a tip for you guys that are overclocking these AMD older systems, the standard temperature readings in like hardware monitor and other programs, real temp number one doesn't even know how to do it on these AMD processors, but you need something like MSI Afterburner because it will actually give you the correct CPU temperature. As you can see, it's idling in the 20C range. It's about ambient because I keep it nice and cool in here. I prefer cold over trying to get cold. But yeah, at 4.7 gigahertz, let's go ahead and run a Cinebench. I'm gonna close Task Manager. And as this is running, I want you to keep in mind that this, just like the Q9550, only has level two cache. However, it only has four megs of the stuff. So it actually has an eight megabyte dearth, or um, I can't think of the right word. Under full load, it's ramping up to about 55 degrees Celsius, and I believe that's 55 over ambient, so it's probably closer to like 75, but it's still well within tolerance for the AMD chip. At 4.8, it instantly went to like 7580, so yeah, because of the voltage required, we're not going to keep doing that. But 4.7 seems to be very stable, and as you can see in real time, this is much faster than the Q9550 only because I can't overclock the 9550 right now. As soon as I can overclock it, we'll do an apples to apples. It's just, do I really want to spend 25 to $40 for a motherboard for a chip that's also on a dead socket? If you have a 775 motherboard and you want to donate it to the channel, get a hold of me. So we're at 62 degrees Celsius on the cores, which is, again, not bad. We're 64, still well within tolerable ranges. And this is on air, mind you mainly because I'm looking for one piece to one of my Corsair uh, water brackets so that I can run this cooler on it. Once I find that, then I'll be good to go. 334 CB score compared to the Q9550. That is an increase of 50 points. 50 points on a 300 points or 280 point score is actually a very impressive bump. And it did it without going too super duper hot. But the thing you need to understand is this is a newer chipset than the Core 2 Quad. Not by much, but it is. Core 2 Quads are like 2008, 2009 release. This chip is a 2011 release. It, it's instructions per clock are also faster. That's why it is getting better scores even with less resources available to it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load up CSGO and play a little bit on there and see how that comes out. And this is all live testing, otherwise I would do some video capture. I don't think video capture is really necessary right now. Now when we tested the Q9550, we were testing at 1080p medium. We are not testing at 1080p high. That coil line though. Woo. So even though this GPU isn't boosting all the way up to 1410 or 1415 like it's set to, it's still doing way better than the Core 2 Quad was because the CPU is only running at 59%. Which means we're running at around 100 FPS right now, which, if you recall, is about three times what it was running before. Phil? Phil, where'd you go, Phil? There you are. I don't know if that's actually the guy's name, but I call him Phil because it's funny. Damn you. Yeah, we're talking 100 to 150 FPS. So nearly three times the performance while at a higher resolution. 110, 130, yeah, this is absolutely 1 million percent playable. This is a 60 hertz panel, so we're way over the refresh rate, which makes this imminently usable. Needs to go into a case though because uh, wow that uh, that coil wine though I'm gonna boot up 3D Mark now and I'll come back once it starts running the test. Actually real quick I do want to mention that I'm still in the process of downloading a lot of stuff onto my other computer 
including Fallout 4. It's 100 gigabytes with all your add-ons with the DLCs and on top of that I didn't realize that it was a problem with my monitor being on the wrong refresh rate and not the game because it was only booting in a windowed mode and that was causing problems so I wound up actually having to reinstall it. Well I didn't have to but I did it because I thought that was the issue and uh, yeah so now I have to reinstall all my mods. So I'll be uh, fixing that as time comes along. So we're going to run Skydiver even though I know the CPU is capable of more than Skydiver because uh, I want to compare the score that I got from the 9550 to this one. For reference I think it was a 10,500 or 10,700 score on the Q9500 with this graphics card. So let's see what this one does. You will notice that it's running a hell of a lot faster. And you will see I have this card overclocked to 1415. I haven't pushed it any farther than that yet. For reference, the fans on that XFX card are running at 60 or 75%, and it's keeping it in the 60s, which is pretty good in my opinion. As the demo scene finishes up here, I'm going to go ahead and cut away and come back after the test is done. It just takes a long time, and you don't need to see me filming the whole thing. So as I said, 17,697 points, 41,000 on the graphics card, which is good because it was so, so not able to run to its full potential before. 5,042 on the CPU for a grand total of 17,697 combined. Looking at my results, I did get a slightly higher result on one other run. There might have been something that was open on this time, but on the Core 2 Quan 9550 with this exact same graphics card, I got a 10,660. That's a 7,000 point increase, which is a near as makes no difference, 70% overclock or 70% boost. On that system it was running 2669 on the CPU so we've added nearly 50% more to the CPU which also allowed it to run 8,000 points higher on the GPU. Again we're talking about a 25% increase in graphics and an almost 50% increase or almost 100% increase, pardon me, almost a 100% increase in the CPU. So that alone is pretty darn impressive considering these are both old chips. Last thing we'll take a look at is Grand Theft Auto 5 because as you recall on the 9550 system I was getting 30s at 1080p medium. So what I'll do now is I'll load this up. Of course the Rockstar game loader makes it take longer to load these days but uh, I'll come back once it's running. Alright here we are loaded up 1080p full normal settings and one of the big difference is I have population density at about half I have all the traffic density at about half and the biggest thing you'll notice is it's not sitting here and glitching to hell and trying to pop in buildings that you're literally standing in front of and it'll actually go even higher than this under most conditions but 50 seems to be its low which makes this a very playable game. As you can see, even under full acceleration, driving through town. Now, the 580 is capable of much more than this, of course. It's just, again, not being run at its full potential, but it's getting a lot more of its potential than it was on the Core 2 Quad system. Because right now, the graphics card is running, on average, at about 65 to 70%. But as you see, the stuttering is almost non-existent. It's a very stable frame rate. It's a very playable frame rate. And even under fast movement, you know, whipping the screen around seems to work no problem. Yeah. You know, depending on which area of the screen you're looking at, it can go all the way up into the 80s. But still, very playable. So how does this Athlon stack up in 2019? Better than expected. The fact that it uses DDR3 RAM is good. The fact that it has a motherboard that has USB 3 both for front I.O. as well as rear I.O. is very nice to have. That way you don't have to add in cards and things like that. The fact that you could probably run like a 570 or a 1650 or even just a regular 1660 on it and get really decent results is really good. What that turns this motherboard into is a potential for a good basic 
entry level machine. Like I said with the A10 7860K, which actually didn't overclock nearly as well as this chip, if you have somebody that's new to gaming or new to PCs or a youngster in the house and you don't want to give them like an X299 or a Ryzen 2700X system, give them something like this, something that is very inexpensive, processors are cheap, I can upgrade that processor still and I, I may, who knows, and they can learn to treat their system with respect, they can learn about computers, they can play their games, it'll definitely run games like Minecraft, League of Legends, um, all your eSports titles, CSGO as you saw was running fine, so it's a great entry level computer, it's totally usable in 2019. All told, if I had to add it up, I, I again, I don't remember where I got the motherboard from, but I couldn't have paid more than probably 30 bucks for the motherboard, and probably, I think it came with the processor, so, but even if you go out and you look right now, in fact, I'm going to look, okay, I was wrong. This motherboard is actually a little more expensive than I expected. It's actually a $55 motherboard. And that's sold listings. 55, 54, 83, 50. Looks like the price actually went up over the last two months. That's weird. Probably people wanting to get entry level systems. And then the processor was $27. Yeah, $27 for the last two that sold. So. 75 bucks for the motherboard CPU combo. I paid $80 for that XFX 580 in the box. Works beautifully. And then the RAM, 20 bucks, 30 bucks maybe. So you could actually get everything on that motherboard for less than 200 bucks and have a pretty decent little gaming machine. Obviously you would need to add a case, but you can get those for under 30 bucks. And a power supply, you can get those new or used fairly cheap. Now granted, the power supply on this one is my CX750, those are like 40, 50 bucks, but you can get away with a lower power power supply if you get like a graphics card without a six pin peg connector, like an entry level like 1650 or even a 1030 or a 750 Ti, those would run fine on this system. Still give you decent results and you'd still be in for less than what we're talking about here. So yeah, it's about a $200 build. I'm going to be throwing it into a case, so keep an eye out for that. But I just wanted to see how usable an eight-year-old system is in 2019. So that's about it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave a like down below, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, use my links, help the channel grow. Also leave me a comment, let me know uh, between the graphics cards that I have sitting here, which one you'd rather see a review on first, either the 580 8GB or the 1080 for the Win Hybrid, just to see how they're holding up in 2019. I read all the comments, I respond to the ones that aren't arduously redundant and yeah if you'd like to donate something to the channel that would be awesome I'd love to get some stuff from you guys to test even if it's something that you don't think is working right or doesn't work at all give me a shot maybe I can get it working and make a cool video out of it that would be pretty awesome I'll keep doing stuff like this because it's stuff I have on hand it's easy and while I'm technically on bed rest basically I'm just sitting here with my foot elevated uh, it's something that I can do so yeah, until next time, I'll talk to you later.